So today we'll be looking at Timothy, my praying mantis, my massive ant colony, as well as my jumping spiders. So let's kick things off with Timothy. Timothy, by the way, is a she, so I will refer to her as a she throughout. When you last saw her, I think she was eating a fly. She was still fairly small. However, since I first got her, she has molted four times. And let me tell you, if you haven't ever had a praying mantis, like this is my first ever praying mantis, um, I was shocked at how much they grow after like a molt. It's insane. I would see these like wing buds, which I'd heard about. I took some nice photos of them. I thought, oh, that's cool. They must be slowly developing. And one evening I saw her hanging upside down. She'd been there a while, thought she's gonna molt tonight. And the next day I came down and she had wings and I was just like, wow. So she's doing excellent. I will say she's a little intimidating. I handled her once and I think she mistook my finger for prey, hooked onto it with her claws, which actually really hurt. Um, and she kept going to bite. And I don't know if she was just trying to release them or whatever, but it was scary. And that was before she got the wings. So now she's even bigger and she's not as handleable as she was like I used to be able to get her out and she'd walk hand to hand and I never felt threatened but now I'm kind of scared like any movement she's on it another thing I found is it is more difficult to get the prey she needs just because I have bought flies like house flies or blue bottles online like the pupa but they aren't hatching. So I'm having to use like waxworm pupa, sometimes waxworms, uh, millworm pupa that are freshly molted. I'm having a similar issue with feeding my jumping spiders because of this fly issue. They say to refrigerate it and then take them out, but then they just never hatch. So if anyone has any tips on that, let me know. But overall, Timothy's doing really well. Her tank is also doing amazing. If you didn't know, this is the Biob Earth, which I was gifted last year and the plants have gone wild and it's so wild I have to keep trimming them. Like these baby tears were originally scraps of baby tears that I pulled out of my garden. Like they were just ripped out, just little bits. I don't even think they really had roots and they have gone crazy in here. So it's safe to say the tank is not only doing great for the plants, but also Timothy. Um, a lot of people were worried when I first got her that because she wasn't in a mesh enclosure, she wasn't gonna be able to successfully molt. Well, that's never been an issue. She'll hang from her branch or from leaves. And yeah, so far, so good. Next, we have my ant colony. Now the ants were in hibernation and if you saw my previous video about them, I got them out of hibernation. I was worried because there was some mold in the tank. That hasn't seemed to affect anything. They are doing amazing, actually too amazing because we've had to get them another enclosure. Now Ants HQ very kindly sent me another one of their enclosures so I could link it up because the outworld in this tank has been so hectic that the down below completely full, outward completely full. It's like they need more room to expand. So this nest lights up like the other ones. You can peek in the nest if you want to. It came with a bunch of accessories like tubing, tongs, jelly pots, um, lots of different stuff. And I got it all set up for them and connected it. Now, it did not take long for the ants to start exploring the new tank. They're just doing so well. Like one of the chambers down in the nest is full of cocoons. Same with the cocoon, well, empty cocoons in the outworld. This is just how many workers have emerged since coming out of hibernation. So this colony, it must be four or five years old now. It's just doing so well, I am so happy. But once again, the demand for food and water has got crazy. Like I am feeding them and giving them water multiple times a week at this point, just because I have to keep up with demand. Some of the things I feed them, they have bee pollen. They of course have honey, they have 
water. They've also, I've experimented with dried leaves, uh, Insectigold, Omnigold. Obviously now I'm working for Arcadia, I get my hands on a few of their products, so I have them lying around, let's try them. Um, they also obviously get insects, I tend to pre-kill the insects so they aren't eaten alive. Um, so yeah, they are fed a range of of foods and things that they would interact with in the wild so I think that's really benefiting them and they're doing really well. Now for my jumping spiders so we left off with my new jumping spiders Velma and Winnie and I did say in that video I wanted to explain Velma's situation a little more in a future video because we did have a bit of an issue at the beginning uh, but first I do want to let you guys know if you did miss it Betty my first ever jumping spider sadly passed away. I kind of expected it. She was slowing down a lot. She wasn't eating that much, although she looked fabulous. Um, she wasn't making webs anymore. I moved her into a retirement home, so a slightly smaller tank, easier to get around. And then one evening I went to see her and I saw her on the climbing wall that I'd made her to help her get around. And she was still holding on. But I could tell there was something just different. And when I went in there, yeah, she had died. Um, she was over a year old. Um, I would say maybe, if I remember correctly, like 14 months. And I know they can live anywhere from a year to two years. I've heard some even last longer than two years. But I could kind of see it coming. And it's a shame. Like, I never thought I'd cry over a spider. But I did. But the other spiders are doing well. Um... Bertie is a little tricky to feed just because he only seems to like flies, blue bottles, house flies, nothing else. I mean, he lived with a moth for about a week, uh, didn't want to eat it, just lived with it. And I should have removed it, but they didn't seem to bother each other at all. They just stayed opposite ends. Um, I won't be doing that again, though. I don't really want to leave the food in there. It just seemed pretty happy. Um, other than that, he is doing absolutely fine. He spends a lot of his time in his little heart spood tube. If you didn't know, and I'm sure I've mentioned it many times before, we have our own Etsy shop. We make stuff for spiders, tarantulas, snails, frogs, geckos, you name it, all 3D printing. I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out. But the spood tube is a favourite. Now, if you remember, when I moved the new spiders in, Velma went straight into her star tube, and I was really happy to see that. She started making a little webbing in there, all was good. However, she didn't emerge from it for the first two weeks, and I found there was a lot of condensation inside of that little tank. That was a tarantula cribs one. Now, what I think the issue was is the substrate, though I didn't water it, must have had some moisture in it. And it couldn't escape from this tank. So I'd say if you're using this style tank, I would just say stick some like moss on the floor. You know that sort of craft moss or dried moss. No moisture because it's going to get really humid. So she never came out of that tube. She didn't eat and I was slightly worried. I moved her to the double canopy one I think it's called. And instantly the next day she was out and about. So what I think she was doing was sheltering from what seemed to be a rainstorm for her. Um, as soon as she came out though, I noticed that she had molted and she was straight back to eating. So that's great. She's been in there ever since. She's got a little air plant in there, a little spood tube still in there, a little feed platform. Um, I'll wait a, a few more molts before I move her into something bigger. Now Winnie, wow. That spider has a fantastic appetite. She eats all the time. And at the moment, I am feeding them fruit fly quite often just because they could definitely take on a house fly. But as I said, nothing's hatching. So we're using the fruit flies that I have. But the other day, Winnie actually caught like two at the same time. She went after two. She's eaten one and went after another. So yeah, these are definitely probably a bit too small for them, but it's what we've got at the moment. And as they're growing, I really want them to eat. Winnie looks quite skinny here and that's because she had just molted. So I did find her molt on the floor. So it is nice to see that they are both eating. They have both molted and um, they're doing well. Um, it's kind of nice to have that after like losing Betty that I still have like Winnie who kind of reminds me of Betty but little. Um, but overall they're doing really good good. So all in all, everyone is doing well. Timothy is massive and intimidating. The ants are growing so rapidly, it's kind of scaring me. And these spiders are adorable. 
<laughs> if you keep insects or arachnids or anything like that, let me know below what you keep or what you would recommend keeping as a pet. But I hope you've enjoyed this little update. Thank you for watching and goodbye.